Okay, here I'm going to be going over some of the cellular membranes located within a cell, and a lot of these will apply to both plants and animal cells. So starting off with just a general parts list, you can see located just below me here a typical animal cell uh, as an example, but again a lot of these will apply to both. So these members organelles, these organelles that have membranes, most obvious we have the plasma membrane, and that's responsible for regulating what comes in and out of a cell. We have the nucleus, which is where most of the DNA is kept, and that's where we're going to be, uh, the cell will be regulating the expression of those genes or those DNA sequences. The mitochondria is your energy or ATP synthesis portion of the cell, and remember those are located in both plants and animal cells, unlike the chloroplasts, which are energy for carbon fixation found only in plant cells. We also have the endoplasmic reticulum, which is your protein processing and membrane synthesis, and there's both rough and smooth. The Golgi, which is responsible for the modification and transport of vital proteins within a cell. Vesicles, responsible for taking things in, in little compartments, and also things leaving or exiting the cell. And we have some non-members structures, just to point some of those out. Ribosomes, they're just responsible for protein synthesis. They don't have that specific membrane bound. We have the cytoskeleton, which is for cell structure and strength, um, and so mo mobility and transport within a cell, uh, moving materials throughout the cell there. Also, when we talk about uh, mitosis and cell division, some of those components can be involved. And we have the extracellular matrix, which is responsible for cells adhering to one another, cells moving, um, and cells kind of interacting or communicating uh, certain proteins with other um, cells in the area. So in animal cells, as I mentioned, we just kind of have some of those membrane proteins here. Uh, we have a, kind of a nice little diagram here locating uh, and pointing them out what they look like in, in a general sense, at least in a cartoon image, uh, to give you kind of an appreciation for all those little components within an animal cell. It wouldn't be complete unless we had a plant cell. You can see this here and a lot of the same components as well. Some a little bit larger, for example, the vacuole um, is much larger in a plant cell. So this endomembrane system, so we're looking at this entire kind of um, how this works together. Uh, this is a series of membranes uh, that are part of the cell. And because we have these membranes, we have these little compartments. And this allows isolation of specific components within the cell. The true system here involves the nucleus with the nuclear envelope, the um, rough and smooth ER, the Golgi apparatus, the vesicles, um, to help this kind of whole process kind of come together. They're located in this kind of vicinity in this um, sequence to allow those genes to be in the nucleus, uh, to be able to produce final proteins that may be used within the cell or excreted outside the cell. Some of these little protein um, structures uh, contain enzymes. So enzymes are uh, a specific type of protein. They catalyze the removal of electrons and associated hydrogen ions, looking specifically here at the peroxisomes. So they have their own little kind of membrane, creating this little vesicle. They're very similar to a lysosome. They have a membrane-bound um, kind of container here containing enzymes. However, these peroxisomes have an a um, active in lipid metabolism, that's the breakdown of fats. They have oxidative enzymes, uh, peroxidases for fatty acid oxidation. They catalyze reactions to produce hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. This is very toxic uh, and will be broken down into water and uh, oxygen gas by catalase enzyme. In plant cells and also in animal cells, which is often uh, not regarded, there are vacuoles. So they are found in both. Uh, they're for food storage and water regulation. The membrane sacs um, and are larger than a small vesicle. They store materials that are in excess and they can be very specialized. Now in the plant cell, they're quite large and pronounced. They are present in animal cells but tend to be a quite smaller. These vacuoles, looking here at a plant cell, uh, typically have that one central vacuole, can be up to 90% of the volume of those cells. We kind of see that here. They function in water storage, nutrients, pigments, and waste products. Development of turgor pressure as well. Um, and some functions per performed by lysosomes and other eukaryotes. So when I say turgor pressure, so just think of it as water pressure within a cell. And that's what's allowing that kind of swelling and contracting. It's kind of like water pressure. 
more specifically that turgor pressure in plant cells, um, that kind of water pressure, is what's maintaining the osmosis within a cell. Whether if you've ever seen a plant that you haven't watered in a little while and it's kind of wilted, uh, kind of getting that kind of wilted look to it has a very low turgor pressure. Uh, plant cells have that cell wall, they want to maintain that high that tur turgid pressure. They want to keep that kind of plant upright, those stems upright and be able to move water through the plant. And when they kind of lose that turgor pressure, they what we call become flaccid or wilted on the initial onset. And that's what's kind of going on here at a cellular level that water is leaving the cell and that vacuole is shrinking.